I saw an interview a couple of, maybe a year ago, two years ago now at this stage, uh, with the, I think he was the strongest man in the world, I'm not sure if he still is, uh, Eddie Hall is his name, he's from England. Um, he's nicknamed The Beast. Sure weren't we all, we were all nicknamed that, I suppose, when, when we were in school. But anyway, The Beast uh, is his nickname. And he was describing in an interview what he had done to become the, the world's strongest man. So he, he deadlifted uh, a little over 1,000 pounds, so 500 kilos. So that's a deadlift, for those who don't know, is when the bar is straight on the ground, you, just, you, lift, you only have to do that. But it's a half a ton. So that's like four fairly chunky lads sitting either side of the bar and you lift it clean off the ground. Now, the training you have to do is absolutely savage. It's just incredible. He eats about 8,000 kilocalories a day. Most of us would eat about 1,500. So you're just, you're just constantly eating. You're eating nuts. You're eating just stuffing you know, two or three breakfasts and full Irishes, or full Englishes in his case. Uh, eating, you're, you're trying to get in as much food as you can to get... He was 28 stone, by the way, and didn't, he didn't look fat. He was just six foot three and looks like me. But, um, <laughs> but, but uh, anyway, so, so he explained this whole world record effort uh, where, uh, and you can, you can watch this on YouTube later if you want. Uh, but so obviously there are crowds around, there are cameras around, there's a huge uh, hoo-ha about the whole thing. And he comes over, and you, know, the other way, you know the way they get all kind of psyched up, they're just kind of staring at the bar. And uh, so he grabs the bar, lifts it, and then you just see that the whole body shake, and then boom, he drops it and collapses because uh, he burst a blood vessel in his head. Uh, he was under so much pressure. Like, the body is not built for, the, for that kind of effort, you know? But he was just describing it, and, and it was one of those English breakfast TV programs that he was being interviewed on, Philip Schofield and whatever her head is, Willoughby, whatever her name is. Um, uh, and they're saying, well, so what did your wife think? And he said, well, he said, well, uh, she supports me in this, but um, this is just my goal, right from being a child, right from being a child, like I wanted to be the world's strongest man. And uh, so would you do it again? Absolutely. And I, I just, I was looking at this going, oh, I, mean, I hope she's not watching this. Like, I mean, like, you know, would you do it again? Like, would you do all that again, knowing, knowing what happened? He said, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's risky business. This is my job. Like, I'm a professional body, not bodybuilder, weightlifter, power, strongman. Um, that's what I do. And, and you have to be 100% committed to the goal or you will never attain it. Right? You have to be 100% committed to the goal or you will never attain it. And I said, wow, if you can do something like that just for lifting weights off the ground, how much more important is it that we dedicate ourselves to our eternal salvation, right? to get into heaven? to working towards getting to heaven. Because if there's one thing that I think we all have discovered in our, in our lives through different experiences, is that mediocrity, mediocrity stinks. Mediocrity is so uninspiring. If, if you're mediocre at anything, it's rubbish. You know what I mean? If, if you're an employee, for example, sorry, if you're an employer, and you have mediocre employees kind of half do their job, you're constantly chasing them. You know? Uh, if, if, uh, if you're a cook and you kind of you know, half cook your stuff, all right? Uh, if, if you're working in a hotel and you kind of actually half book in the guests, you know what I mean? If you're cleaning out a swimming pool and clean out most of the insects and bugs and rats that have fallen in, you know? I mean, ha half done isn't done at all. You know what I mean? We, we all know that from our lives. Like, and that's what inspires us then when we see people who have attained greatness is the blood, sweat, and tears, the absolute dedication it took to get there. You know, if you've ever seen the Olympics, like, we're all just astounded like at these incredible athletes. But how did they get there? That wasn't two weeks of practice, just you know, cramming it in in the last minute. That was probably eight years, years of nonstop, 100% dedication to get that far, just to qualify even. Phenomenal. So how do we apply that same kind of dedication to our faith? Okay, today's gospel, I'd say, has a lot of priests around the country wincing, right? Because this, this, is, this is an awkward kind of a one to explain, okay? Uh, when Jesus seems to be quite dismissive of this lady. She's a Canaanite, right? So she's not an Israelite. She's not one of the, the chosen people. She's a foreigner, effectively, okay? So it seems like, she, like, 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 it seems like he's being dismissive. Sir, son of David, have pity on me. And he answers her not a word. And then the disciples come and on her behalf say, Lord, do you not want to, you know, help her like she's 
roaring. She's, you know, just, just help her, you know. And, uh, and he says this, this line, which is, as I say, is when, even when I read it, I have to kind of skim, skim through it kind of quickly, make sure no one notices it. But, but uh, Lord, he says, give her what she wants, they said, because she's shouting after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. But the woman had come up and was kneeling at his feet. Lord, she said, help me. He replied, it's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the house dogs. Right? That's it's one of those expressions for... I'm hoping there's a translation problem there, but that's, that's, that's what it says. She retorted, ah, yes, sir, but even the house dogs can eat the scraps that fall from their master's table. Okay. So, what do we see here? We see one absolutely key element uh, in growth in the spiritual life, and that is perseverance. Perseverance. You, we have all had the experience that we prayed for something and didn't get it immediately. So what do you do? Just give up? Just stop praying? Just say, well, I prayed a whole rosary. I didn't get the thing I was asking for. I had a mass said, nothing changed, so that's it. This whole faith thing is made up. Or do we persevere? Do we push on through like we do for so many other unimportant things in our lives? You push on through. So what, what actually happens here? So it looks like he's not listening. But then the apostles intercede for the lady, right? Like all of you pray for other people or you get a mass said for someone else. You're an intercessor. You're uniting your prayer to their prayer, right? And then what happens? At the end of the day, she gets what she asked for. The Lord sees her faith, and she, pers she, so she persevered through what looks like an initial silence on the Lord's behalf. <clears throat> then she's interceded, so the, the community joins with her in prayer. And then she gets what she wants because of her faith, because of her perseverance. Okay, so how do we persevere in the spiritual life? Because I think for a lot of us, maybe we think, well, sure, I'm, I'm going to Mass. That's, that's kind of perseverance in the faith. There's a little more to it than that. In order to persevere in the faith, number one, I think we need confession. Get a good clear out of the heart and soul. If there are any obstacles to us and God, get them out of the way. Get them out of the way. I love when visiting priests come here because I welcome them. I give them a cup of tea and then I say, look, any chance we could have a bit of a confession, you know? Because uh, I, I like to go regularly myself, you know, once every week or two weeks, if I can. Um, so in order to persevere in the faith, remove all the obstacles, get them out of the way, get your soul cleaned. And then two, regularity in prayer. Regularity, as in daily. Daily prayer. Push on through. Sometimes it may seem like the Lord is quiet. Sometimes it may seem like he's not listening. But remember, the Lord is love. It's not something he does, it's something he is. And if we ever doubt that the Lord doesn't care, the Lord doesn't listen, you look at the cross and you see what you're worth to him. You see what he's willing to do to get you to heaven. You see what he's willing to do to heal your wounds. You see what he's willing to do to forgive you your sins. That's, that's who God is. So if we're not sure how this gospel really works and could Jesus have been dismissive, no, he couldn't. That's not a dismissive God. Jesus cannot and will not, never is dismissive. But this lady is learning a lesson and we're being taught it 2,000 years later that it's not that our prayers are always initially answered immediately but that our perseverance is rewarded. Woman, you have great faith. Let your wish be granted. And from that moment, her, from that moment, boom, her daughter was well again. She got what she asked for. It just took a bit of time. I was thinking of uh, St. Faustina as well. So the Lord calls her to be a sister. She's at a, she was at a dance with her sister, a uh, non-religious sister, blood sister, sister of the same mister kind of person. Uh, so they're, they're at a dance, and they were dancing away, and uh, she had been somewhat running from a vocation, or running from the thought of a vocation. And then in that moment, everything just kind of goes black. She doesn't hear the music, doesn't see anyone, but she just sees the Lord standing there after the scourging. So he's looking fairly, fairly beat up, scarred and bleeding and bruised. Uh, and he says, how long must I put up with you? How long will you keep me waiting? Now you could imagine if you had, you know, if, if Jesus said to you, how long must I put up with you? How long will you keep me waiting? And then the music came back and she was aware of her surroundings again. And she said, that's it, I, I, I have to go. I have to enter a religious life. So she goes to Warsaw. Okay, she knocks on 
She goes to a church, prays about where the Lord wants to guide her, knocks on a convent door, and they say no. She knocks on another convent door, and they say no. She knocks on another convent door, and they say no, we don't take maids. Ouch. All right, okay. And she, she was getting refused and refused and refused, because <clears throat> also at that time, people were afraid that poor girls would come up from the country and look for such the comfortable life of, of a convent. Regular meals, regular housing, regular life, don't have to worry about all of the bills and that kind of thing. So <coughs> the superiors wanted to ensure that people weren't avoiding real life by entering religious life, weren't avoiding responsibility. So she was rejected numerous times. But yet the Lord asked her to go to Warsaw and enter a religious community. Why didn't he just open all the doors? Perseverance. To teach her perseverance. To teach her faith, even though I'm trying to do your will, but I don't, it doesn't seem to be working out immediately as, as I thought. And so then she eventually goes to uh, the congregation of the Sisters of Our Lady of Mercy. Our Lady of Mercy. And she prays there and she meets the Mother Superior. The Mother Superior, again, is a bit hesitant, sees this poor peasant girl up from the country. And uh, she says, I, I feel I'm called to enter this religious community. And she said, go and pray in the chapel, as will I. And we will see where the Lord is truly calling you. And indeed, the Lord was calling her there. And so she entered and became the great Saint Faustina that we know now. But it's somewhat like this gospel. It wasn't all plain sailing. It will not be for us either. Perseverance. If we are to achieve greatness in the spiritual life, which means if we are to attain any semblance of sanctity, it will come through our perseverance, through our self-sacrifice. And we put that into practice by wiping the slate clean, by going to confession, by daily prayer, and then by a regular sacramental life, receiving the Lord in the Holy Eucharist, <clears throat> drawing from the gift of the Holy Spirit that we have received in baptism and confirmation. And so we ask the good Lord today to renew our perseverance in prayer so that when we are rejected, when our prayers aren't initially answered, when it seems like God is silent, that we will push on knowing that he is a merciful and loving Father. Amen.